Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's still beautiful here in Florida, so I'm doing some outside reviews. And now we have the Zero Friction B52 Bomber Golf Ball. Let's dive in. <laughs> Testing golf balls is easy. Running a full-time YouTube channel isn't. With an extremely busy day-to-day -day lifestyle, Magic Mind is my go-to productivity drink to ensure an extremely productive day. Natural ingredients keep me laser focused and feeling great, which is why I recommend them to all of my golfing buddies and especially my scramble partners. Magic Mind, golf ball addict approved. Okay, yeah, so this is an interesting one. So this is actually one that's pretty much, I think they sell them in some places at Target. I mean, you can get them on Amazon. Uh, but at Walmart, they're about 17 to 18 a dozen. Uh, actually, scratch that. I'm sorry. They're about 17 to $18 per 15. So these golf balls are about $1.10 to $1.20 a piece. Uh, so really on the low side of that, basically kind of in line with the Cut Red. Uh, of course, the Cut Red being one of the best golf balls I've tested on this channel. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, this golf ball is supposed to be kind of a direct competition to that. It's designed for guys I think who want to hit the golf ball really long uh, they want to hit the ball really far they don't want a ton of side spin and they don't want to spend a ton of money because most likely they're gonna lose them which is completely respectable when you're starting out the game that's very common another golf ball that comes to mind when I think of this is the top flight bomb which actually did not test so good on my channel I, I had terrible luck with that but reminds me of that kind of similar style wording on the box hit bombs, bombs away, you know, hit massive moonshots, B.O.B. bombs over bag just all kinds of stuff right um, it really, you know, in the, in the tune of just hitting this. And in fact, even if you look at the back of the box, it says, you know, treat your golf game like the, you know, B-52 bomber itself and bombs away. And I don't know if carry, I don't know if comparing golf balls to uh, war machine, air, you know, bomb aircraft carriers, I don't know if that's exactly the best way to advertise your golf ball per se. Uh, but hey, that's what they did. You know, that's, that's where we're at. It honestly feels a little gimmicky to me. Um, based on what you see here, if you read the back of this box really carefully, it doesn't really go into a mass amount of detail as far as like, hey, the golf ball does this, or it's designed for this, or you know, this, if you're looking for this, it just says, hey, you wanna hit bombs, here's a golf ball, you know, you wanna pay less money, here's a golf ball. So we'll see, it could perform really well, but I definitely wanna test those numbers for sure to make sure that they're actually up to par for what some of the other golf balls in this price range we've compared to, because there are some really good ones. Let's dive into the design of the golf ball first. Um, looking on the front here, this, it, it looks so gimmicky, it really does. I mean, if, if, you're into, if you're an old military guy, you really might like this look as far as the B-52 bomber. It's got the star in the middle of the O, it's got you know a, a bomb coming down from the logo in the middle of it or whatever. You know, as a collector's item of golf ball, that would be really cool. But something I was playing with every day on the golf course, that would look a little cheesy after a while. I just don't know how it would. I actually, I like, I, to be honest with you, if you come around here to the side even, and you look at this alignment tool, which the alignment tool is trash, but I do like that they did a red and blue for red, white, and blue. I love red, white, and blue. And then I even put a little golf dot above it there. I put the chili pepper. Um, so that actually looks really cool. I love that, but if you turn it around, um, and see that B-52. Now on the other side, it is actually the Zero Friction logo. That's not bad, uh, but the B-52 is just really cheesy. Overall, not super impressed with it, and it feels really cheap too. All right, let's get out to the chipping and putting green and let's see uh, exactly how it does out there. All right, now sometimes on this channel, you guys will hear me say, you know, the bouncy ball effect, which is basically when you're hitting a golf ball, um, it's when the golf ball kind of acts like a bouncy ball. You know, it really has a lot of spring in it. It goes boing and really bounces off the club and really get, you know, you don't have to bring it back as much, whether you're using a putter, a wedge, driver, you know, you can do a nice smooth swing and you feel like the golf ball really just takes off when you hit it like a bouncy ball would. Um, but usually when I say that, it's more of a metaphor. It's just comparing it, you know, apples to oranges, but giving you a comparison. This golf ball actually feels like a bouncy ball. Like it, the first time I hit it, the golf ball went about five, 10 yards, not feet, we're chipping, five, 10 yards past what I thought it would because of how far it went off. But not only that, how high it went. I've never had a golf ball go this high in the air from just chip shots. I mean, if I'm being honest with you, I, I'm probably about six foot one, six, six foot and a half, six foot one, we'll say. Chips off the green, we're talking fringe, we're getting as high as my, my head, as high as my head. Most of the time, you can't even see it. It's not even on camera. It's down here like at my knees. This golf ball really gets up in the air. It really springs, it boings. 
I understand it's a two-piece golf ball and I understand it's designed you know, for the newer crowd, but I've never experienced anything out of the 80-something golf balls I've tested, one like this. It's super soft, uh, it really just springs up in the air, no spin, firm release, no left or right, extreme forgiveness. This golf ball really is going to be for, for beginning players who are just starting out. You know, uh, hey, here's your first time holding the golf club. Get used to it because that way you can really focus on club path and getting the ball to go straight. Other than that, if you're a seasoned player at all and you've even somewhat kind of figured out like, oh, yeah, I can get the ball to check up if I do this or oh, I can get it to, you know, low shot if I do that. No, no, this golf ball is, is pretty much vanilla. It's pretty much a one-way road. And unfortunately, you're either with that or you're not with that. It's too weird for me. You know, now that I'm a player who's tested all these golf balls and I know how to get them to manipulate them, having one that just always goes above my head on chip shots, I, I can't imagine what it would do from, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 yards off the green if you got a lot of height. It, it, it would be crazy. And also, that could be that height could be making up for the lack of spin. You know, if you're really wanting to stick a green, you get the ball super high in the air, let it just stick. But we'll actually get to that more in a moment when I do the actual numbers. Maybe if, if it's launching higher there, I'll forgive it. Now, once we go to the putter, let's just do a complete 180 here. If you're using a mallet style putter, it does have a click. It's pretty decently loud, uh, but you don't feel a lot in your hands. It still feels soft for the most part. Um, it doesn't have a true roll, but it's pretty good. About an eight out of 10, nine out of 10, pretty good. You'll see a little bit of, uh, inconsistency when it first comes off the putter, but overall not bad for a two-piece golf ball that's a dollar a golf ball. But I was using a bladed putter for the second part of my putter test, and uh, that's where things got really weird. So it feels really heavy at that point, really clicky. I felt it in my hands, did not like how this golf ball felt at all once it came off the bladed putter. Um, it actually felt more like a, it's, it's so weird, off a mallet putter, it felt like a Wilson, you know, soft two-piece golf ball. And then hitting it with a bladed putter, it felt like a Tor X four-piece golf ball, five-piece golf ball. Uh, so I, I, really weird. Again, really weird, really inconsistent. Overall around the green, there's just too much of this here for me with this ball. Hopefully the numbers will save it. You know, I know it's just designed for a two-piece beginner golf ball. So hopefully those numbers add a little bit of distance to my game. Okay, so getting into the feel of the golf ball off the irons, off the driver, I do apologize for this line in the middle here. It's just where the sun's hitting us just right at the moment. Um, I apologize about that if it bothers you. But when I think of the feel of this golf ball, it definitely is on the firmer side. It reminds me of the Top Flight Bomb, to be honest with you. That's exactly kind of what it reminds me of. It's a firmer two-piece golf ball, maybe for your average too fast swingers, because uh, it's designed for someone who's really gonna bombs away. They're really gonna swing really fast, uh, be sporadic, not a lot of side spin here. So really just, you know, straight bombs away, trying to prevent your slice, prevent your hook. Uh, but it feels firm. Not a super big fan of it because it also doesn't really feel like it's jumping off the club either. I really like a good bouncy ball effect where I feel like that golf ball's just springing off the club like, you know, like a rocket. Not the case here. Not terrible, but it just kind of comes off the club at a normal pace. Let's get into these numbers now. So 90.2 with the nine iron, uh, that is slightly below average. 125.2, that's actually just slightly below average as well, so good distance. 118.1, that is uh, slightly below average. 23.6, which is a slightly higher than my average. Okay, so those numbers aren't bad. Uh, they don't blow me away, but they're not underwhelming either. They're right in line with what my average is, and so I, I don't have a problem with that. Let's go into the seven iron now. 6,772 on the spin. Holy cow, that is way, way too high for a two-piece golf ball, especially one that's promising distance. Uh, 106.2 is okay, that's a little below average. 159.2, I lost a yard. 147.5, I lost a yard. And it launched really high at 19.4. So really the mistake this golf ball is making is that it's actually got way too much spin. It's launching high. It, it's supposed to have really good ball speed, which it doesn't. It just has okay. But then it's spinning so much that I'm losing probably about five yards on that spin alone. So yes, you'd be able to stick a, a green really well, but that's not what this golf ball is intended to do. If you're trying to stick a green to that degree, there's a million other golf balls on this channel you could try. So I'm not a big fan of those numbers. Let's dive into the five hybrid. We are are looking at 4540 on the spin, which again is really, really high. Uh, now 119.7 is really high on the ball speed. Um, 198.3, 184.8, those are great numbers. And it launched very, very high at 16.2. So the golf ball is launching high. I'm getting supposedly a little more distance in that regard. It's getting the ball up in the air and getting it high, which a lot of people do need help with that. Uh, a lot of young golfers will hit it way too low a lot of the time because they lunge too much and they just don't have enough height. So this golf ball will help with that. 
but I'm just not a big fan of the distance numbers in total. You know, I, the 9 iron was okay, 7 iron was okay, and now we're getting into the hybrid, which was really good. Um, but we're spinning too much for a two-piece golf ball. I think it's going to do a lot of ballooning. If, if the wind was in your face, I think you'd lose quite a bit of yards. Getting into the driver. So 29.14, again, the golf ball is spinning way higher than my average. I lost distance here, 237.9, um, 132.2 on the ball speed. I lost about two and a half mile per hour. 217, I lost about five yards. And the driver launch was about mid. So that's not bad at all. Those numbers, as far as the launch angle is good. That's right where I want to be. Uh, most of the launch angles aren't really in a bad spot. But when I look at the driver numbers, now I'm losing distance. That means now at this point we were below average, below average, um, average to good, and then now we're below average. And so there's just not a lot of great there. But real quick before I give you my final thoughts, I want to touch on the durability. It's not bad. Um, it actually is about a four and a half out of five. It's going to survive a while. It is, you know, your Serlin more cheaper cover. So it is going to, you know, take a beating a little bit well than like a urethane will because the urethane will scratch. Looking at this golf ball, it actually looks pretty good. The golf dot remain intact. Everything's really good there um, after about 60, 70 shots. So I would say this is definitely going to get you through a round. It could probably get you through a round and a half, to be honest with you. All right, so wrapping up, who is the golf ball for? Um, it's really hard to give this golf ball recommendation. A lot of it feels really gimmicky. It has an okay performance around the green. Uh, I'm not a fan of the logo. It feels cheap. It feels, you know, gimmicky. Um, I'm not exactly who, who it's for. I mean, I have an idea, but they don't tell me who it's for on the box. Um, and really, there's no alignment tool to help young beginning golfers, you know, line up their putts. Um, it's, it's just really, unfortunately, a lot of mediocre in here. And when you have a golf ball like the Cut Red, who is basically, as far as I'm concerned, the direct competitor here, um, because it is a top three golf ball on my channel, the Cut Red is. It's a dollar golf ball. It's an amazing golf ball if you haven't tried it. That's this competition, and this is nowhere close. Uh, the Cut Red beats it in everything. Everything from design, alignment tool, the numbers, green side performance, durability. Across the board, the Cut Red, when I tested it, was way better than this. So that's, that's what's going to get the recommendation, not something like this, unfortunately. Guys, as always, keep watching and keep saving and keep learning. Until next time.